France. Uh, Canada. A. Uh, what else? Anything important for a Canadian settlement? Sorry if you're from Canada, you know, one of those things. Oh yes, uh, I'm like, what am I doing here? Uh, fur trade. Fur trade, uh, what else you got with this one? In order to accomplish good fur trading, you need kind of good relations with the natives. Um, Obviously, it's a little bit of a tough settlement area with the winters, uh, and this is going to be a major point of conflict. Uh, that's sort of why you got the, they're trying to expand into upstate New York, England is trying to stay, uh, expand into upstate New York, and that's one of the big conflict zones. We're also around the uh, Great Lakes uh, and the GLs, Great Lakes area. Uh, that's sort of the, uh, again, the, I mean, obviously there's going to be a major war that's fought there. Um, the other big area for the French would also be New Orleans. Um, as I think I referred to it back then, the Den of Sin. Back then, as it potentially is now, depending on what parts you visit. Uh, what, uh, New Orleans, uh, kind of a rough and tumble place. Uh, but the key to New Orleans is, the reason why we even have it there, is the Mississippi River and its inroads into the Mississippi River area. And of course, this is going to connect the two, and this is one of the big aspects of Canadian settlement there is you have the buffer zone. Uh, it's going to contain English settlement there. Uh, and obviously, this isn't right at the beginning, it's a little bit later on. Is everything okay over there? Do you need to stop for a second? Okay. Uh, so you got uh, that. Anything else with uh, France? We'll get to a little bit more to them later. Um, all right. I don't think I can really write on it. No, you can't. You can't. Can. If I can use this? Okay. I'm pretty sure you can. There's writing on it, just so you can blame it on it. I should have blamed it on it. No, 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 no. Oh, no, 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 <laughs> what was I supposed to erase that with? No, I Try with that. that. No, I'm not supposed to use those markers that are. Yeah, you're supposed to use the. Uh, the oh, no, these are like not markers. Yeah, those are all. Just to try to erase markers. Just check. There's a uh, yeah, lots of stuff that's just old. Never mind. Just short circuits. Short circuits. <laughs> All right, um, you can probably find some of these notes in the past, by the way, uh, like particularly this one coming up. Uh, New England, uh, going to try to crank through the old uh, colonial regions here. Um, what, uh, what do we got in New England? Name of the game? Puritans. Puritans. <laughs> Slash religion. Uh, so you have the, uh, and, and obviously you've got a nice little Puritan town in Newtown to kind of think about, uh, but um, uh, some big names, obviously the Pilgrims, uh, other big names from this, a lot of Johns. Uh, you got John Winthrop. Uh, yeah, you've got, what is Thomas Hooker, Hutchinson is in there too, a couple of, but Willie Winthrop and I think, <laughs> John Cotton, I think, is also an older one. Uh, I think. Something like that. Or Cotton Mather as well, right? Cotton Mather. Never mind. John Winthrop's the big one. Uh, what's his, uh, what, he's got a couple of catchphrases that uh, that are pretty big here. Social reciprocity. Social reciprocity. Wow, pulling out the big guns, Austin. Uh, usually people go with more so the more... Famous one, but the less probably significant. Well, I don't know. It's so we got city upon a hill. Uh, both very related. These are similar ideas here, right? The whole idea here is that they are going to reform society and create a model for the world, the model of Christian charity, basically, uh, with the very steeped in the concept of social reciprocity, where basically people interact with one another fairly and equitably and 
uh, nicely, and uh, there is a class structure in the social reciprocity, the idea of it being that the poor, what's the trade? The poor do what for the rich? What's that? Don't rebel against them, but even uh, show sort of deference and respect to the wealthy. Uh, they recognize that they're the lower end of society, and in exchange, the wealthy uh, of the society give them uh, just to, you know, make sure that they're cared for and make sure that they aren't starving to death, things like that. Uh, but the, also, in addition to this, the whole concept of society is that you don't have wide variations of wealth. Um, uh, and it's supposed to be more of like, a, I mean, this is a utopian society uh, that you got going on here. That there's not immensely wealthy people mixed with very poor. Um, what, what else is significant about this uh, society, particularly as you're looking at it to differentiate between the Southern or Chesapeake society? You've got a close-knit community here, and obviously this fits with the social reciprocity as well. In the center of this close-knit community, here we've got a church slash meeting house, the center of not only the religion but the government as well. Uh, and it is a, uh, it's, it's for the most, for all intents and purposes, a direct democracy within the town itself. The town meeting is, uh, is pretty much as close to a pure democracy as you're going to get uh, in modern history as, at any point. So uh, there's all that. Of course, then there's also some representative things going on eventually as they send representatives to Massachusetts Bay government and all that. But this is the center of it all, closely around the church or meeting house. Think Main Street. You've got, uh, uh, you've got homes or, or houses, the community. Mixed into this area, relatively close, this, this by the way is not drawn to scale, this is a rather large dot. This was supposed to be a dot and then it got bigger and bigger. Um, part of this territory is set aside for like a commons, much like the ram's pasture, if you remember talking about that way back. Uh, and on the outskirts, you're going to have the farmland, but not much. There's not much farmland for each of these homes. It's just enough to, what's the idea of farming in New England? It's, it's enough for your family. It's sort of self-sufficiency here. Um, and, and that the environment, you know, you got climate mixed into this whole thing too. Uh, it's amazing how all this sort of work together. Uh, you have short growing seasons. Uh, you've got rocky soil and, and not very good soil. Uh, so farming's not going to be that successful anyway. So there's no impulse by anybody in the society to snap up large areas of land and try to make uh, sort of plantation style uh, farms because it's really not worth it. Uh, so, um, uh, so that kind of fits in with this whole kind of uh, system and style of things. Um, uh, so then we have some things happening. Well, what else is a close? By the way, close knit society allows you to do what? I'd say a couple of things that are kind of communities like to do. They like to have some, I mean, it's all centered on religion, but this is, allows for religion. It allows for a democracy to occur. Uh, and it also allows for, yeah, being, you know, spying on their names and make sure they're not doing horrible, horrible things. No, I think it's probably a little bit overblown. I mean, I think there is some, like, um, yeah, I mean, that's sort of the stereotypical view once you look at, what's that book, The Scarlet Letter, uh, that everybody's sort of watching each other. And, and there's probably elements of that in society, but I, don't, I, don't, I think it's probably, a little, it's probably a bit of an exaggeration of society there, I would say. Uh, I was getting for education. Uh, and you've got uh, the education system that does develop here, uh, the Old Deluder of Saint Act in 1649, uh, that allows, that mandates uh, that at certain levels of uh, families that you have uh, a teacher first and then a, 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 and more than that, then you've got um, a school building built, a one-room schoolhouse generally. Uh, and uh, so this is going to mandate education within Massachusetts Bay Colony. Yes? When was that? 1649. Um, 
So you got public education, uh, and the other educational aspect that is pretty significant is you have your first university or really college in the United States. Uh, Harvard is actually actually predates the uh, um, the public education, 1638, nine, seven, something like that. Um, 39. Okay. Um, so you got Harvard College there in the mix as well. Um, then you have some social tensions rising up in the New England area. The first is dealing with generations. You've got the what happens between first generation and second generation. Uh, there's a loss of interest in this Puritan air and Puritan way. This, uh, particularly the conversion experience, is pretty uh, non-appealing to people. So. Uh, the second generation Puritans are, are having some issues, and remember, in order for um, the third generation to become saints themselves, the second generation kind of has, has to be saints also. So uh, this is very problematic because the third generation is going to be shut out here uh, unless something is done. And the uh, long story short is 1640, um, you have the, uh, the halfway covenant. Uh, 1640, should I remember? Uh, uh, no, I can check the date. Halfway, 1640. Oh. Halfway, 1640. Halfway, 1640. Halfway, 1640. Halfway, 1640. Halfway, 1640. Halfway, 1640. Whoa. That was supposed to be 16, uh, 1662, the halfway covenant, which allowed the, uh, as long as your grandparent was a saint, then you could become baptized, which of course is the first step uh, to, uh, to becoming a saint yourself. So uh, the, the significance of this is twofold. What's happening to the Puritan mission? It's the Puritan wave is fading. And what are they willing to do to try to keep the Puritan way? They're, 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 they're willing to uh, sort of downgrade the whole belief system of everybody in order to try to get, uh, to, to keep this thing rolling. And that's, uh, so you've got um, uh, willing to make changes. Yeah, so. So then you can so in order to become baptized, your parents had to be saints. So this allowed for as long as your, uh, I think as long as your parents were baptized, actually, then you could become baptized as well. I think that's what one of what it was. Um, the specifics of it. Uh, what's the other big tension here? How, the farming thing's not working out so well, so what do they do, naturally? The economy becomes diversified. Uh, and New England has some pretty natural inclination to go into the neighborhood of like logging and fishing and um, um, trade in particular. And obviously the big class, the new class, is the merchant class that starts to arise. And remember very early on the Puritans are very suspicious of this mer uh, merchant class and they passed the 5% rule uh, in... Oh, I'm not sure the date I'll on that one. Yeah, it's 16. Uh, I want to say that that is, that is earlier, I'm almost certain. Maybe that one was 16. I don't know. You're not, not really going to need to know the date anyway, man. I might find it in a few minutes. Uh, 